Hey guys, welcome to video 39. Today we're going to combine a lot of the transistor circuit analysis techniques that we've been working on in the analysis of a capacitively coupled three-stage amplifier. I want to start by just looking at an overall view of how the circuit's going to work and explain what I was thinking when I designed it. Starting with stage one, we've got a Zeklai transistor that's set up as a class A common emitter amplifier. I used a Zeklai here so that I could get uh, high input resistance for the amplifier. And because it's a fully bypassed common emitter, we're going to get pretty decent voltage gain out of stage one as well. Now stage two was designed to produce maximum output voltage compliance. Voltage gain was a secondary concern here. Because the output stage has a gain that's less than one, uh, our output is going to be determined primarily by what Q3 can do. And that's why I had to be especially uh, careful designing this so that I maximized its output voltage swing. And that's pretty tough to do with capacitively coupled Class A amplifiers. They're not really well suited for that. And uh, we'll see why as the analysis goes on. But I also used partial emitter bypassing. And the idea here was that I traded off a little bit of the gain magnitude of stage two in order to linearize the gain a little bit. That's a pretty good trade off considering we have two cascaded common emitters. So we're going to have plenty of voltage gain in this amplifier. Now stage three should look familiar. This is basically the same push-pull complementary symmetry circuit we used in the previous uh, video. The main difference is that I increased the values of biasing resistors R10 and R11 from 10K to 15K. And I did that so that I could center the Q point on the AC load line for stage two in order to maximize output voltage swing. All right, now when you're analyzing a capacitively coupled multiple stage amplifier, you can determine the Q points of the individual stages in any order you want because the coupling capacitors isolate the stages one another in terms of DC voltages and currents. But when you're doing a signal analysis, because stage three is the load on stage two, we need to know some things about stage three before we can analyze stage two. And likewise, stage two is the load on stage one. So if we want to figure out what stage one is going to do, we need to know some things about stage two. The take home is that you can do the DC analysis of the transistors in any order you want here. But when we do the AC analysis, we start at the output and work our way back towards the input. All right, with all this in mind, let's start our analysis here on stage three. And what I'm going to do first is determine the current that's flowing down through the biasing network, R10, D1, D2, and R11. Okay, that would be given by, uh, let's call it I sub D1 because it's flowing through D1. And that's VEE minus two VBEs for these diodes divided by R10 plus R11. All right, let's pull up our calculator and see what we've got going on here. So we've got 15 minus 1.4, that's the two diode drops, divided by 15K and 15K is 30K. And that gives us about 453, let's just call it 450 microamps down through uh, this side of the circuit, okay? So let me write that here, 450 microamps, okay? Now, we know that there's no uh, good equation that tells us a relationship between the bias current and the output transistor idling current. So I'm just going to take a guess at it. And I, I know it's going to be a few milliamps or so. So let's just guess that maybe it's two milliamps. I think that'll be close. And uh, it's not critical what this value is, as long as it's not very big and it's enough to overcome the uh, crossover distortion issues that we have out here. Okay. Now, if the two sides of the uh, circuit are fairly well matched up, we should drop about 7.5 volts across Q5 and 7.5 volts across Q7. Likewise, the output node should be at 7.5 volts. And the input node between D1 and D2 should also be sitting at 7.5 volts. All right, and while we're here, let's figure out the approximate voltage gain and input resistance for stage three. 
All right, Rn for stage three is going to be beta squared times RL in parallel with R10 and R11. Okay, now beta squared is about 5,000 for these transistors, so we've got 5,000 times 8 ohms, and that's about 40k ohms. And then we've got 15k in parallel with 15k, so that's 7.5k. And making it a little easier on myself with the calculator, we've got 40k and 7.5k. And it gives us an input resistance of about 6.3k ohms. 6.3k ohms. And I'm going to write that over here. 6.3k. And now the voltage gain of stage 3. We know it's going to be less than 1, so I'm going to approximate it as about 0.8. That's pretty reasonable. Uh, so we'll just say the voltage gain of stage 3 is about 0.8. All right, so now we've written down most of the things we'd want to know about stage three. Let's go back to stage two. All right, let me clean off my workspace. And starting at stage two, let's find VTH and RTH, okay? So VTH for stage two is VCC times R5, or I'm sorry, R6 divided by R5 plus R6. Six. Okay, so let's see what we end up with here. Uh, all right, R6 is 2.7K divided by 2.7K plus 12K times 15 is about, let's call it 2.8 volts. Okay, so this is about 2.8 volts, and I'm going to write it over here 2.8 volts okay and now let's find rth that's equal to r5 in parallel with r6 and let's see what we've got here r5 is 12k plus 2.7k it's about 2.2 k ohms Right, I'm going to write that here as well, 2.2K. All right, now uh, let's now determine ICQ. We'll put that up here. ICQ is equal to VTH minus VBE divided by RTH over beta plus RE. Okay, so VTH we know is 2.8 volts and VBE is 0.7, so that's going to be 2.1 volts divided by RTH is 2200 divided by a beta of 100 is 22 ohms so RE is uh, 1000 plus 22 so 1022 ohms and let's see what we get then for our collector current all right 2.1 divided by 1022 is so let's round it off to 2.1 milliamps okay so we have about 2.1 milliamps for icq3 all right vce is equal to vcc minus ic times rc plus re all right so we got 15 volts minus uh let's see 2.1 milliamps times 4.9 k Let's see what we've got here. 0.0021 times 4,900 and minus 15. We get a VCE of about 4.7 volts, okay? I'm just going to write that here. 4.7 volts, okay? Sorry, I didn't write the rest of it there. All right, now let's clear the workspace off and... Uh, Let's find our little re for Q3. Remember, little re is equal to VT over ICQ. So that's 26 millivolts divided by ICQ is 2.1 milliamps. And let's see what that is. 26 divided by 2.1. 
is about 12.4 ohms. All right, I'm going to write that here as well, 12.4 ohms for little re. All right, now uh, we can determine the input resistance of stage two. All right, R in to stage two is going to equal RTH, the Thevenin resistance, in parallel with beta times little re plus the external AC emitter resistance R prime sub e. Okay, now little re is 12.4. Our external R prime e is 1k in parallel with 22, and that's close enough to 22 that we can let it go. So what we end up with here is RTH 2.2k in parallel with 100 times 12.4 plus 22 and let's crunch these out and see what we come up with all right so 12.4 plus 22 times 100 is about 3.4 K so we've got 2.2 K in parallel with 3.4 K and let's see what that is I'll just keep this number we'll take its reciprocal plus 2200 its reciprocal and we get an input resistance of about let's call it 1.3 k ohms all right i'm going to write that over here as well r into stage two is 1.3 k and the voltage gain for stage two well uh to find that we need to find r prime c uh for this circuit and that's going to be R7, the collector resistor, in parallel with the input resistance of stage 3. So R prime C for stage 2 is R7 in parallel with R in 3. R7 is 3.9K. R in 3 was 6.3K. And let's see what our AC collector resistance is. Okay, 3.9 plus 6.3, about 2.4 K ohms. All right, so R prime C, 2.4 K, All right? Then the voltage gain of stage two is negative R prime C over little R E plus external R prime E. All right, so we got negative 2.4 K divided by 12.4 plus 22. And what do we get here? Let's see, clear 2400 divided by 22 plus 12.4 is a gain of, let's call it negative 70, okay? So this second stage has a voltage gain of about negative 70. That's not too bad. All right, now we've figured out just about everything we need to know about stage two. Let's move on to stage one now. So let me clear my workspace a third time and we'll get to work on stage one. Okay, we need to find VTH. Again, so VTH for stage one is VCC times R2 over R1 plus R2. So let's see what we get here. Drag this over, clear. R2 is 82K divided by 82K plus 680K times 15 is about 1.6 volts. Okay, so we've got a VTH of about 1.6 volts for stage one. I'll write that over here. All right now we need RTH, which is R1 in parallel with R2. All right, so let's see what we end up with. We've got 680K plus 82K, which is about 73,000 ohms, okay? So our RTH is 73K ohms. All right, write that here, 73K. Our, uh, let's see, what do we want to find next? Well, let's do uh, ICQ, and that's going to be 
VTH minus VBE divided by RE plus RTH over beta. And remember, it's actually beta squared for this transistor, which is about 5,000. So uh, we know that the Zeke-Li transistor has a smaller than usual base to emitter voltage drop. So uh, just to make the math nice, let's uh, make it 0.6. And we'll say that uh, VTH, or I'm sorry, uh, ICQ is equal to 1.6 volts minus 0.6 volts. That makes the math easy. Divided by RE is 1K ohm. And uh, let's see, we've got an RTH of 73K, but that's divided by 5,000. So let's see here, 73 divided by 5,000 is about 14, 15 ohms compared to a thousand. That's negligible. So let's just ignore it. So we've got uh, 1.6 minus 0.6 is one divided by a thousand is one milliamp. So stage one has an ICQ of about one milliamp. All right. It's VCE is going to be 15 minus ICQ times R3 plus R4. So that's, uh, let's see, one milliamp times uh, 5700 is 5.7 volts and minus 15 we're going to have a VCE of about 9.3 volts for Q2 all right now let's find little re for this stage again 26 millivolts divided by ICQ so we've got 26 mils divided by 1 mil is 26 ohms all right so little re is just 26 ohms here our input resistance to stage one is the same thing as the overall input resistance and that's equal to rth in parallel with beta squared times little re okay so let's crunch through and see what we get beta squared is 5000 times 26 is 130,000 in parallel with, uh, what is our RTH, uh, 73K. And that gives us an input resistance of about, uh, oops, I'm sorry, I messed things up here. Let me try that again. 5,000 times 26 is 130,000 in parallel with um, to do 73,000. And there's our input resistance, about, let's call it uh, 47K ohms, okay? Approximately 47K ohms. And I'll write that over here, 47K. And finally, let's find the voltage gain for this stage. I'm about out of room, so we'll make a little bit of space up here at the top. Okay, AV is equal to negative R prime C over little re. Negative R prime C, uh, let's see, that's R3 in parallel with Rn2. So 4.7K in parallel with Rn2, 1.3K divided by 26. And don't forget the negative sign. So let's see what we get here. Okay. I got 4.7 plus 1.3. So about 1,018. Okay, let's times 1,000. And we'll divide by 26. And we get a voltage gain of about, let's call it 39, negative 39 for the first stage. Okay, so there we are. That was uh, quite a bit of work. And uh, that's just what comes along with these multiple stage amplifiers. It's a ton of writing. But what I'm gonna do is slide on over to a nicer version. And I consolidated all of these uh, values for you guys. So we've got all of the DC currents and voltages that we calculated, plus some others. I calculated uh, the collector base and emitter voltages for all the transistors over here too. And we had a voltage gain for stage one of negative 70, 
stage 2 was about negative 40. We estimated stage 3 as about 0.8. The overall voltage gain is just the product of the individual voltage gains. That is, AV overall is just AV1 times AV2 times AV3, etc. So for as many stages as we have, we just multiply the gains together. And when we multiply these three together, we get a gain of 2,240. That's pretty good. It's not going to take much voltage to drive this amplifier to full output. Now remember, current gain is Rn divided by Rl times AV. So Rn is 47k ohms. Rl is 8 ohms. So 47,000 divided by 8 times 2,240 is a current gain of 13 million. That's pretty good. And finally, the overall power gain is the voltage gain times the current gain. 2,240 times 13 million is 29 times 10 to the 9th power. Normally, I'd consider that a pretty big number, but uh, you have to consider it's about 1 12th of the current U.S. national debt. So maybe that's not such a big number, huh? Hmm. Anyway, uh, what I've got over here now is the maximum output swing for the transistor in stage two and the minimum output swing. Okay, now uh, I, normally we'd go through the AC load line analysis and stuff to get these numbers, but I'm just going to condense it and show you how these are basically arrived at. VO max for stage two is equal to negative, or I'm sorry, not negative, it's just ICQ times R prime C, okay? So we have an ICQ of 2.1 milliamps. R prime C is R7 in parallel with the input resistance here. That's why I bumped these resistors up to 15K. It maximized my signal swing, all right? And when we multiply this out, we get about five volts. VO min is just negative VCEQ, all right, but we're driving the output stage, which has a gain of about 0.8. So this voltage is going to be multiplied by about 0.8. So 5 volts times 0.8 is 4 volts, and negative 4.7 times 0.8 is negative 3.8 volts. So we don't get very much output voltage from this, but the output power is a peak of 1.8 watts and about 0.9 watts RMS. So we do get some decent performance out of it, but it's nothing to write home about. All right, now what I want to do next is a quick piece by simulation to verify the voltage gain of this circuit, okay? So let me call up piece by uh, here's our, our schematic editor, and I've already, you know, drawn the circuit, and I set my input voltage for an amplitude of one millivolt, okay? Uh, this amplifier has very high gain, so it's not going to take much to overdrive it, so one millivolt is a pretty decent input to start with. All right, so let's do an analysis, and we'll simulate it, okay? We'll call up probe. We're going to do a transient analysis, and we want to look at the output voltage waveform. So we'll add VRL2. Where is that? Uh, it's a big list. Here it is. Okay. So VRL2. Here we go. Okay. So once it settles down, it looks like we're getting an output voltage of about, uh, I don't know, let's say, let's use this high one, about 2.23 volts peak. Considering that Vn is 1 millivolt, that means the gain of this amplifier is 2,231. All right, and what did we predict for this? Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. We predicted a gain of 2,240 right here. Okay, P-Spice is telling us it's actually uh, 2,231. Uh, That's pretty good, uh, you know, uh, correlation with our theoretical values, okay? So uh, let's see what our clipping limits are, okay? And uh, what we'll do is go back to the V in source and let's bump that up to five millivolts, okay? So if we make that five millivolts and we repeat the analysis, okay, we're gonna do transient. Okay, let's add our waveform and we want VRL2 again. Where is it? Oh, for heaven's sake, there it is, okay. VRL2, 
And here we go. We've got clipping on the positive and negative going portions of the output. Let's just pick one here. We're getting about 3.5 volts uh, for VO max, and we estimated it to be 4 volts, so well, we're about half a volt shy of that. VO min is about negative 3.6, and we predicted negative 3.8, so we're not too far off. Everything looks pretty decent signal wise. Now, how about let's take a look at the voltages and currents here, okay? Uh, I haven't done that yet, but if I click I, let's see what we've got here. For the, the input z pair, we've got a collector current of about a little over 1 milliamp. We predicted 1 milliamp, so that's good. Uh, the second transistor, uh, Q3, we predicted 2.1. P-Spice is giving us 2.029. That's not bad. And uh, let's see. Our bias current we figured was about 450 microamps. P spice says 462, and it's telling us that the output transistors are idling at about 2.37 milliamps. So two was a pretty good guess. All right, and just for the heck of it, let's check our voltages. Okay, uh, the base of Q1 is 1.58. We said 1.6. Collector. P spice says 9.98, we said 10.3. Emitter 1.06, we said 1. And I think you're going to find the rest of the transistors are in good uh, correlation to P spice as well. We've got 7.523 at the node on the output, we predicted 7.5. And we predicted 7.5 between the diodes, P spice says essentially 7.5. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but you get the idea. And uh, I guess we can take this uh, as a sign that the things that we're doing are meaningful and useful, okay? So I wouldn't steer you wrong. The things that I tell you are actually the way circuits work, okay? And here's what I'd like you guys to do is take this circuit, print it out, and do an analysis to verify these numbers. I think it would be you know, real good practice and uh, it gives you a little experience in dealing with how you uh, calculate voltage gain when you have interacting stages. All right, so uh, hopefully you guys hung with me in this one. I know this was a long, tough video, but uh, if you can do this stuff, you're really uh, learning a lot, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.